Hey guys, Randy Younger here, Unger the Radar, here at the 30th anniversary screening of the classic film Say Anything. Right now I'm about to interview the producer James L. Brooks, actress Ioni Skye, and of course director Cameron Crowe. Iconic film, obviously. Making the film, did you expect it to be this huge? Uh, you never expect a picture to, you know, it's always the greatest thing that can happen to a movie that somehow it's on the shelf and it enters the library of film. It's just sort of library of Congress stuff. <laughs> this makes it official tonight, so that's great. Did you have any idea how big it was going to be? Um, I mean, I knew it was like a studio movie and it had all these great people involved, of course, like Jim Brooks over there, but... Um, <laughs> Yeah, you just don't know the magic of, you know, if it's going to work or not. And, you know, Cameron Crowe just creates such a warm, amazing atmosphere in his movies. What is it like being involved with such a great movie? You never really know. I mean, it was my first movie as a director, and James L. Brooks was uh, amazing to me and so protective. We, we went to a few people to direct it, okay, and they, they said, oh, I like it, but not quite right for me. Huh. And, it's not really going to be the thing I want to do next. Okay. So we'd go to the next person, the next person, and then finally uh, Jim said, you know, if one more person passes, it's going to have to be you, buddy. <laughs> and I kind of went through a terrified phase and then stepped up and had the best crew and, and cast. Yeah. How does it feel to be involved with such a great movie? It's always great to be involved with a film that people love so much. And um, that's just like a heartfelt, really well-written film with great people. I wanted it to feel like a, a short story. And okay. in fact, it began as a short story. Okay. So just like a tale that's told mm -hmm. late at night right. about this guy, Lloyd, who fell in love with Diane. I just like the idea of it not being a, uh, a teen movie right. in that genre. Yeah but a, a movie that embraces young people and, yeah. um, and love. I wouldn't even call it a teen movie. Yeah. It's like, it's pretty much timeless and it goes across, Thank it's for everybody. You know? Well, when, we, when the studio first saw it, they said, what is oh, this? <laughs> is this an adult movie? Is this a teen movie? Yeah. What is it? And yeah. they had a, a screening to try and figure it out and they decided, it's a teen movie. Yeah. And it wasn't. Right, right, right. It's so much more It was that, that, but it was yeah. some other stuff, too. It's just a, you. It's a classic tale of love. Do, do people go up to you, like now, do they go up to you and, and mention the an iconic uh, built, the radio scene? I try and avoid people. Yeah. But, <laughs> do they come up to you no, with, with boomboxes? I'm kidding around. No, they, yes, yes, they do. Uh, what was it like working with John Cusack? John Cusack's the best. He's just a dynamo. He's like, he's so inspiring, and he really changed my life. He's so courageous as an actor, and I was just very happy. Happy. So over the years, you've obviously done some great films, some great uh, projects. How do you go about picking those projects? Well, I try and write something that feels true to uh, to the different stages of life. Like I, I like the idea of writing about basically my age group as we continue through okay. life. Like some of my favorite directors, like Truffaut, for example, or even Richard Linklater. Okay, you right. know, able to be like a documentarian. Yeah as well as an auteur. Like, like Boyhood. Yeah, great like example. this is yeah. great. So, yeah. so um, I, I, just, I just like writing human stories where the characters stick with you a while. Yeah. Now, how would you classify your relationship with your actors? I love the actors. Yeah. We're partners. Yeah. And, and there's nothing like watching it extend past what you dreamed in your head when you wrote it, <laughs> which sometimes you can really be a stickler for like, I envisioned it yeah. this way. Yeah. But great actors will come up like Philip Seymour Hoffman in Almost Famous for right. example you come up and say like I think I'm going to do this scene quietly uh -huh. <laughs> and you're like let's do it quietly and of wow. course it's yeah it's, great. it's the best scene in the movie you didn't expect that to happen no That's also The Simpsons also iconic <laughs> how, how do you go about picking your projects I, I, you know you know we're, we're the, the, the basic theme that unites everything is writer power okay. That's it. <laughs> Okay. And working with great people has always been a, a, a great thing with you. Um, as good as it gets, phenomenal film. What was it like working on that film? Uh, it was it was maybe the hardest one I've done, and 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 one of the most satisfying. Okay. I know you're also a painter. Yeah. How's that going? It's good. Right now I've done two commissions and I sold two paintings I painted maybe 30 years ago, like this okay. movie. Cool. So I'm having a big boost at the moment. I don't know why. You know, okay. it goes up and down, but it's been great. Are there any projects uh, coming up that you could talk about? Yeah, we're doing uh, almost famous. 
for uh, the stage. Okay, which really? is super fun. That's insane. Yeah, <laughs> with Tom Kitt. All right. And Jeremy Herron. Okay. Um, and then uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna do a new movie in the fall. I'm really well, excited about it. Now, speaking of, of, of theater, uh, what is it like transferring a film to stage? What is that process like? It's very musical, which okay. the movie was musical right, right. too. But it's um, great movie, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. It's it's really about finding a new way to tell the story in uh, in, a, in a in a smaller space, right. but keeping the emotions bigger okay. than ever. Okay. Um, huh. I just I grew up loving you know plays lived across the street from the Old Globe in San Diego nice. and so I never thought I'd get here <laughs> but now to study Sondheim and people like that and yeah. try and uh, learn this new format it's it's awesome. thrilling yeah great any uh, film projects you can talk about now um, I mean you can still watch um, Camping on HBO okay. which is a really cool show um, and I'm just waiting for great quality stuff to come. Yeah. Well, we have a. Are you gonna? Are you gonna reunite with uh, John? I hope so. I think so. Yeah. I have a good feeling you, I about think it. You, you have to. I know. I mean, it might not be this. The, it might not be a sequel, but in some <laughs> right. things. Yeah. And there you have it, guys. The 30th anniversary screening of Say Anything at the Tribeca Film Festival. Thanks everyone for watching. I'm your host, Randy Unger, with Unger the Radar. See you next time.